So I was trying to figure out how to get the Unreal Mannequin or any Unreal character into Houdini, make some modifications, and then bring it back out again without breaking the skeleton or getting the unfound, unused bones issues that I usually do. And couldn't find anything to walk through all of it, so once I figured it out, I figured I'd put together this little video of the, the whole process. It's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, to start things out, of course, you have to export the mannequin or, again, whatever character you want from Unreal. And you can just do that by right-clicking the skeletal mesh in Unreal, go to Asset Actions, and then Export. Choose when you want to save that. Um, the export settings are really simple. You don't need any of it. Um, even the version doesn't seem to matter much. Uh, but once you have that, then we get into Houdini. So once you're in Houdini, um, I have this all built out already. I'll step you through, but uh, generally you'll be starting with a fresh scene. So you want to drop down a geo node, like what I have here. Hop into that. Create this FBX character import, like I have here. I uh, point that to wherever you saved your Unreal FBX, uh, your character FBX. I kept mine all in the same file with a Houdini file, so you can use the, the hip shortcut. Um, and you can actually go straight from that to the export, which again is just a, a character export right there. Uh, nothing special on the name or any settings. Um, if you're just exporting a character, you can do the current frame. If you're doing an animation, then you want to pick a range. Um, to do a recapture or a quick reweighting of your own unique character, like my incredibly detailed box man here, um, you'll want to use the bone capture lines. If I could type that one right there. Again, uh, just default settings. You plug the, um, the second node from your character import into that. From there, you use the tet embed, which kind of rebuilds uh, almost like a volume mesh, uh, kind of proxy mesh of both the rig and your character. This lovely mess. It's a little slow, especially the more detailed you have, but again, all default settings. Nothing special needed there. And then you bring that into the Bone Capture Harmonic by Harmonic. Link up that Tetan bed with your main character. And that essentially transfers all the weights. Um, it's really smooth, blurred out, so you'll want to clean that up. Um, but it's not bad as a test. And then you'll run that new line right into your export if you're popping a new character. And then if you want to test it, this bone deform uh, just takes the character input the uh, bind pose, and then uh, you could either go straight from the animation or your modified rig pose, and then anything you want to do in there, or if you want to make new animations, you plug that deform back into the animated pose before export, but I'm just using this for a test, and the nice thing here is you can see exactly how it's weighted, freak it out a little bit, twist things around just to see how it works. Of course, this box man is very simple, so it's it's going to show up. It's going to animate very simply. Um, one thing I didn't mention: this attribute transfer is just for the name. I was getting warnings if it didn't have the same name as the uh, character mesh came in with. It's that name right there. Um, I believe if you don't want to transfer the name, you could just set a name right here, but you'd also have to create or overwrite the name on both of these. I think it just needs to match. It doesn't seem to matter if it's the same name, though. You'll get a little warning in Unreal, but it it works completely fine with that. Uh, that is the basic and quick setup for a, a normal character. Um, if you want to use, or if you want to clean up the character for bare skinning and obviously a more detailed character, I definitely recommend looking at 
the uh, Kin Effects for Games video that Side Effects put out. Let me show you that. I'll add a link in the description of this video too for uh, where the video is, but just a quick preview. Um, he runs through kind of how long they've been working on that and some details there, but a few key points uh, you probably want to check out. It's around this 18, 19 minute mark. He goes over some of the weight cleanup, capture paint, really nice, really nice tools they've got here to make it much easier. Um, they also have a really nice, um, really nice mocap setup that he runs through. I mean, he can do this with any Unreal character. He does some retargeting as well. I highly recommend checking out this Kinefix for games. It's a, it's a great rundown. Here's a little extra for anyone interested in setting up a kind of a quick rigid bind um, instead of a soft capture bind uh, as previously shown. The setup is similar. Um, uh, there's a few vex uh, attribute wrangles and slightly more complicated, but I'll show you how it runs down. The uh, end results are kind of nice, though. You can do some some very simple rigid binds to the uh, Unreal character, the Unreal Mannequin, or any character, um, like my awesome box man here. Um, but uh, the big thing, um, bringing in the, the uh, name again, just to keep that the same. The capture proximity just transfers the kind of the bone name and setup. Um, it seems to need that information to start off, and it's, it's good just to use. Uh, the capture unpack uh, takes the, uh, it's kind of a strange packed array set of details. Um, all of these capture data, capture index, before you unpack it there. These uh, unreadable kind of, uh, yeah, it's just a ray sets. But the uh, unpack makes them so you can use them in VEX. So then I promote the, um, the detail, which has the entire list of joints and capture data or position data and whatnot. I promote that to uh, point data for quick reading. Um, you can do it with a detail attribute as well, but this just worked even more easily. Um, and then match, or run through the uh, all of the bones to see if their name matches the name I gave to each piece, which I did up here with this. So I give them a bone name. You can make the attribute whatever you want. Um, plan on more procedurally building out uh, the character so it automatically grabs whatever bone it came from by making a head. It'll know to name it head. If it's you know spine or anything in the chest, it'll name it appropriately. But you have to do that for each piece that you want to rigid bind to the similar joint. And then I made this little holder grid. It's absolutely tiny at the bottom. I did that just for any unused joints to avoid problems that I'll, I'll show you later. But you could also just, um, you could do something similar to just a single point, but this was quick and easy, easy way to display it. Uh, anyway, I'm, now I'm using those bone names to match up with their joint name, um, and then I set the, uh, the weighting to one, just so it's completely flooded. And then the index is what that capture data is just kind of strange naming. It, it matches an index to a name. So the head on all of mine is buried deep in there. If you look in the points, um, my head is always 57. So anytime it matches wherever the index of that array with the name, then it knows to assign that box to that index. And it basically goes through every point and checks that. So if you have more detail, this will get a little slower, but these um, attribute wrangles are always pretty quick because it's a good way to go. And then this is that holder geo I was talking about. I, I grouped it. And then they're just all 
it, it grabs every single joint and, and assigns it to it. It also gives it uh, zero, zero weighting. The rest will get um, a negative weighting later, but the important thing is that they're just used somewhere on the mesh. Uh, the attribute delete is purely there to get rid of that big, a big mess of a an array that I was using for the the quick wrangle, and then the repack capture attribute pack um, sets it back to these odd packed arrays that the uh, bone capture needs, and then you're good to export it. Or again, you can use the uh, the bone deform to test animations, make new animations. Um, if you're going to export an animation, you want to connect that. But just as it is, it's good for good for quick testing. I uh, hope that's useful for someone, but this is a quick rundown for you. Jump over to Unreal for importing and show you that. Uh, back in Unreal, ready to import your new character. So you just right click in the browser, go to import, select your mesh, wherever it is you saved it. And then most of the uh, settings should work just by default, but the important thing is that it recognizes the UE4 mannequin skeleton or whatever character you based off of. Um, but it should recognize that if, if you've got all the connections right and pretty much everything I put it as good, then you're good there. Uh, just double check through the, the import settings, but again, generally everything is good as is. Um, if you're bringing in an animation, you definitely want to check the import animations box, but uh, if not, you can leave that off. Import that. Uh, most of the warnings you see here are just because I used a simple little box man. Um, you can ignore those. The uh, name clash is what I mentioned with that name transfer within Houdini. If, since you're using the same name as your base character. Um, again, I think you can just ignore that because it, it's smart enough to rename it, but you can also rename it within, within Houdini, but you have to do all three nodes. Double check your character, make sure it looks all right. Um, important thing to check is the, the skeleton itself. You see some of the bones are bold, and that means they've got uh, weight into them. They're actually being used. The uh, non-bold ones are kind of unused, unweighted. And if you didn't use the holder that I mentioned, um, when you're selecting those, you'll see them stretch back down to the uh, origin usually but like you see here since i did use the holder they're in their proper place um, and if they're not then you'll definitely notice a uh, screwed up animation the pieces will be kind of flying everywhere and stretching everywhere but you can then hop over to the animation tab and select whichever animation you want to check out um, it will usually default to your base character as the, as the main preview, but then you can swap that preview mesh to your new character and it should animate just as it's supposed to and should be good to go. Um, that should cover everything though. I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.